in my area in Wailua it's 88 degrees high will be 90s today and low 66 so this is what the dogs are doing they're dead tired saving the energy for the cool of the night yeah, everybody and this one right here is interesting this is sleeping right right there the sun sunbathing I want to depart from the usual this week um, maybe it's still in the same line of heritage clothing, but it's not salvage, it's not boots, it's not classic tees, it's watches. <laughs> you know, I wish I have a lot of time in my hands to make videos. Uh, but I love sharing my, my work with you, you know what I mean? Uh, I know my channel, Stylish Grease Monkey, is mainly about style, heritage, cl clothing, but really my passion is building cars. This is right here, a 5.3 LS on a Jeep CJ7. Uh, I'm changing all of the uh, gaskets, checking the heads, making sure everything is good to go so that the next owner will have hundreds of thousands of miles trouble free in case you're wondering what I'm doing is I'm setting the backlash on the LS motor but that's not a video today the video is about watches so from cheapest to most expensive this is my cheapest watch right here uh, it's nothing but the calculator watch from uh, probably from the movie back to the future and uh, I changed this band my own self because I wanted to have the leather look. Nothing special about this watch. I really just use it to tell time. Uh, I like watches that have a story behind it. And this is a pretty cool watch in my opinion. Um, I know pretty old school, but I am old school. And I like my watches. You can tell time by using your phone. But there's nothing like a watch on your wrist. So you don't have to buy an expensive watch. You can buy something like this, customize it to yourself, and I think it'll look really good. You know how I feel about uh, cheap watches. I don't, I mean, I don't really care. I'm more into what it has to offer and, and uh, how it makes me feel. So for the next watch, I want to talk about this one right here. This is a Seiko watch, if you can see that. And it's powered by solar. This is the Seiko SNE329, if you're going to look it up. I bought it from Amazon. It's actually currently unavailable, uh, but it comes with a brown strap. And uh, I changed it to this Paco or Peco strap, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. One thing about this watch is that, aside from it being solar-powered and accurate, of course, it tells time with those big numbers right there. and It tells the calendar uh, day and the, uh, the date on the calendar year as well and the, and the day of the, the week. It's automatic and if you need to adjust it, obviously this dial right here. And, but on other Japanese movement watches, you know that Japanese movement watches are very accurate and very reliable. Another thing to be proud of with the Seiko is that they have a few firsts, right? They were the first ones to come out with the first uh, quartz watch and also the first kinetic watch. I think that's pretty cool. It goes a long ways with the heritage style that you know uh, I'm a proponent of. Uh, get history, it's got a passion in it, and they still make these things like really reliable. Pretty cool watch. Uh, size of it's a 43 millimeter. Uh, it's not too big, not too small. It's just good for someone like me with a smaller wrist. Bought that Jeep right there yesterday as a project. I know I keep on promising myself. Don't get a hold of things right now because I already have a project, the CJ7, uh, but I couldn't pass it up for a good price. Speaking of a good price, 
let's get back to the topic of watches. So for the price of that vehicle, uh, used vehicle, you can buy a watch that, in my opinion, is an all-around watch. This is the Longines EFC right here. I don't know if we can see it. Amazing watch, guys. You can use this watch for formal events, rugged events, sporting events, or whatever you need. And you only have to buy one because it is an automatic watch and it will last you a lifetime. I promise. Um, you can service it every five to ten years and it will literally last you a lifetime. Very hefty watch. It's heavy, the heaviest in my collection. You guys check this out check it out I have a banana tree back here and it has a fruit well a bunch of fruits on the context of watches real quick uh, this video right here I'm not gonna talk about um, how go how low can it get underwater because to be honest with you none of these watches I use for diving or any water activities or something like that right so uh, if you're concerned about it being waterproof uh, you know like when you are in the rain things like that then yes all of these watches I'm talking about they're all waterproof some to a depth of which we don't really care anymore right 300 meters so that's pretty good, I think. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that again. Cost. I spoke about the Casio calculator watch, which is around, I bought it on sale, believe it or not, 10 to 20 bucks. And then the um, Seiko watch was about 120 bucks, something like that. Now, the Longines EFC is a little bit more expensive. Um, when I bought mine, it was somewhere, hovering somewhere about $2,000. Uh, I think it's somewhere, the similar watches to it, because I don't think they make the EFC anymore or in a different design anyways. Uh, will cost you between $1,500 to $2,500. Bucks. Now, it seems a lot, but it's the same thing as um, any of the heritage clothing, right? You buy it for a lot of money. Well, for most of us, that's a lot of money because you have to save. Uh, but they last for a long, long, long time. You know, they're always going to be a classic. They're always going to be in style. Uh, and so if you're in, you know, investing on wristwatches, investing on timepieces, you can assure that these things are only going to be more classic down the line. Or the co it'll cost the same if you sell it. You know what I mean? Uh, like you just borrowed it or rented or something like that. If you want to watch this part of history, if you take a poll with watch collectors, they have to have this watch in their collection because of the, just the history, right? It's a chronograph watch that's used by the astronauts back in the 1960s. Omega Speed Master Professional. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the Speed Master because it speaks for itself. Um, for those of you that want to watch, that want something that will last a lifetime, uh, something that you know that you can be proud of, then I think you need to have a Speed Master Professional in your collection. Now, this one right here in particular. I made my own um, band for it because I wanted this look. It comes with the steel band originally. Uh, the cost of it used you can buy somewhere around two to three thousand. Uh, brand new from the store is about between eight to fifteen thousand, and I've seen them go all the way up to forty-seven thousand dollars. I would warn you though, just like anything else that I do, uh, like salvage jeans, you want to buy something like this from a reputable 
uh, dealership because you want a certificate to make sure that if you do decide to sell it down the road as a used watch that you have the certificate of authentication and that you have the real Speedmaster Professional and not some fake watch out there. Uh, real quick, I don't wear Rolex. I don't like Rolex watches. This watch right here is about the same price if I buy it used uh, because Rolex is the number one faked watch in the world and everyone wears a Rolex. So no offense to those that wear Rolex, I just don't wear that. I would rather have something like this that has a history and it's pretty badass. So Speedmaster Professional. You know my videos isn't gonna end without a smoke so today rocket patel decade i think i've smoked this on a video before get some coffee over there snacks let's talk about it i've probably smoked this on this video before um so grab your favorite drink got my iced coffee here and because it's in the afternoon it's a little snack churro <laughs> so we'll go from here and the last watch in this video is also the most expensive I own just a quick disclosure right no I did not buy all of these watches at one point or at one time in a year I saved up a long time and bought them one at a time. That's probably why I favor more of the cheaper watches that I have, but all of them are automatic, with the exception of the calculator watch, which is a quartz battery operated. Everything is automatic because I know that I'm going to keep them for a long time. My videos are long, but I like to share the relaxation time. You know, just like anybody else, I've worked hard, I've worked long, I've I mean, sacrifice so much to get where to where I am, um, and all I got from all, all of that really is some mental issues. <laughs> uh, so it's time for me to take care of myself now, right? And I know some of you can debate that cigar is bad for you or good for you. It relaxes me, and that's why I do it. This is the Breitling Navi Timer. Zero one forty three. Just like anything else, I buy watches because of their heritage, and uh, Navi Timer's heritage is way deep and way old. Um, if you research it, they started in the racing business back in the 1800s. You know, one of the first Swiss watchmakers of the time and revolutionized, uh, you know, good looking and very retro or very um, sportish watches. Now, they make a lot of watches, this is just only one of them. If you would say those are the basis of my watch buying experience and don't get me wrong and as I mentioned before I rarely have the money to buy expensive things like this but with the right planning uh, the right saving if you really want to set a goal for yourself and get it then you can absolutely right the best things about the two watches 
the best things about my watches are that I can probably sell it back into the used market for a lot of money still, right? But why? These are things that I'm going to pass on down to my son, pass on down as a legacy. You know, the things, my personal things that I want and I needed. And I can tell you that as time would go, time goes on, that it only becomes more of a classic, a vintage watch. Uh, and you can't say bad about Omega and a Navi Timer. We can debate all day long what are the best watches, but for me, these are the best watches and what I can afford. And if you're looking at buying your own watch or timepiece for some reason or another because you want to get into heritage, you want to get into the passion, the story behind it, then buy that watch. Buy whatever it is. You know, make a goal, save for it, and get it, right? Uh, and you won't be sorry because every time I wear it, I just feel, it feels good that I'm wearing a part of history. And it's almost always a conversation starter when people that know watches ask me all about it. Sitting under a tree here, people cutting grass, it's a Sunday, it's windy. This thing right here is like all over me all day long, but whatever, I'm enjoying. I know I did not cover a lot of the technical things about the watches I showed you, but that wasn't the purpose of my video, really just to introduce uh, the collection of watches I have and what does a heritage style guy wear, right? We all wear different things. These are what I wear. I'm trying to line it up with the heritage style, you know, having the salvage jeans, the mock toes or Iron Ranger, they all have a history they all have a story and I'm passionate about them they're in in line with heritage and so are my watches so I really just wanted to tell you about that so if you made it this far thank you very much for your support and watching my videos that's all I have for you this week mahalo and aloha